members of the panel on the main table, delegates to the conference, members of faculty, guests and the students. I feel honored to be part of uh, this uh, conference because academic conferences are an important event in the life of the university. Because these kinds of conferences serve one important goal of the university, one important goal of university that distinguishes it from colleges is the creation of new knowledge. That's what differentiate university from a college where you just uh, teach and give degrees. Yes, university also teaches and gives degrees, but in addition to that, a university will always be known for the knowledge they create new knowledge which they create and such conferences contribute to achieving that objective because these conferences provide an opportunity uh, to listen to different scholars, different authors uh, and you also come across different perspectives and views on the subject which you may be knowing. So this leads to enhancement of the understanding of a problem and expansion of one's knowledge. Therefore, these are kind of positive uh, developments. I think there is another aspect uh, that we should all remember. That uh, people write long uh, presentations, essays, articles for the conference, but when they come to conference, they are given 10 to 15 minutes to make the presentation. <coughs> Therefore, it is a challenge how to accommodate your uh, uh, thoughts spread over 20 pages in 10 to 15 minutes. But that's also academic discipline. And in academic, discipline is very important. And how to make presentation in conference is also a kind of an experience. We are now focusing on South Asia. You had, uh, sessions earlier and uh, to me there is much to learn from South Asia and from outside of uh, South Asia because South Asia constitutes 22% of world's population which is a huge uh, population and if we take up all South Asian countries the youth population from 18 to 35 is the majority population. Now this majority population of youth is a challenge as well as an opportunity. It's a challenge because the young people after getting degrees they want to enter the political, social, economic system. They want to move up in the ladder. Therefore the new aspirant will build pressure on the political and social system and we will judge a political and social system on the basis to which the system can accommodate the new aspirants in the position of power and influence. So it becomes a challenge. It's an opportunity because we expect the young people to do research and analysis and to do innovation. Unless you innovate over a period of time, there is a stagnation, stagnation in society, stagnation um, in knowledge. Therefore, uh, this role is, is very important. However, innovation or creation of new knowledge is only possible if you devote your attention to acquiring knowledge, technology and, and uh, scientific developments. So unless you have a basis of knowledge and, and science and technology, the prospects of innovating and changing the stagnation in the society are minimal, if any. Therefore, the university's role becomes very important because it's the final stage for dissemination of knowledge to the young people before they enter the uh, practical uh, life. Now when we talk of South Asia, we should also remember that South Asia combines 
heritage, old heritage and civilization. Therefore, some of the countries of South Asia may be new, Pakistan 75 years, Bangladesh 50 years. However, these are all old culture and civilization. Indus Valley civilization in Pakistan, Mehrgar uh, archaeological sites in uh, Baluchistan, uh, and also Gandhara art and architecture in North Pakistan, from Texala to North Pakistan to Afghanistan. And also his, the historical or the religious places of the Sikh religion are located in Pakistan. Some of the Hindu important Hindu temples are also located in Punjab and Sin. So if you move to India and Nepal, you also have a long list of heritage, civilizational heritage going back to the earliest period of history. And in today's world, despite this strength of these societies of South Asian countries, we have not been able to project a soft image at the international level by projecting this cultural and civilizational heritage of all these uh, South Asian countries. And it is also a, a, a region with, with five major religions, although there are more uh, religions, but five are major religions in South Asia. So this diversity is a peculiar characteristic of South Asia which has to be seen as a source of strength rather as a conflict basis. It's a source of strength if you integrate into your national political system. And I think another important uh, aspect of South Asia which was discussed earlier also in the conference is an unfortunate aspect that as compared with other regions, South Asia is the least integrated region of the world. You have more conflict and the leadership of all eight South Asian countries because now Afghanistan is also part of it of uh, leadership of these countries have not, has not been able to develop a shared strategic vision of the region. And that is a weakness and they have been unable to move away from military security to economic cooperation. They seem to have, have you know, uh, some kind of fixation and uh, that is why Regional cooperation has not taken place in, in uh, South Asia and uh, uh, although the SARC was established in December 1985 but there hasn't been a SARC summit after the 18th summit uh, in 2014. A summit was to be held in 2016 in Islamabad but couldn't take place because India refused to come because they had that Pakistan was involved in terrorism, therefore Modi refused to come. And since then, Saad summit has not taken place. Therefore, this aspect has also to be examined and uh, studied uh, because the troubled India-Pakistan relations are the major obstacle to developing a regional profile in South Asia and uh, uh, these kind of these uh, are the conflicts between India and Pakistan are linked with national ideology of these countries and also the elite perception of national interest. They have shaped uh, this uh, kind of a situation and uh, therefore there is a need to improve the relationship between the two countries, in fact, amongst all South Asian countries. In fact, there is another aspect which you may or may not have noticed. It's not an easy job to travel within South Asia. You don't really have links with, uh, amongst the cap all capitals of South Asian countries. So you sometimes go to Dubai, and from Dubai you take flight to, uh, let's say nowadays even for Delhi, uh, if you want to go by air, you go by Dubai rather than flying from Lahore to Delhi. 
plight that existed and it is no longer uh, no longer there. Therefore, there has to be a dialogue at two levels. If South Asia has to be improved for cooperation, one dialogue within each country, what kind of relationship a country wants to cultivate with the other country. This is one dialogue within each country. Because the problems of one country with another, problems of India and Pakistan, all have also become problems of their domestic politics. They are linked with domestic politics. Pakistan's domestic politics, India's domestic politics. Therefore, there has to be a dialogue within each country. What kind of relationship you want? And second dialogue between India and Pakistan. That has to you know, take place. And the final point uh, that I want to make is why I emphasize the regional cooperation. Greater interaction amongst these states of South Asia because South Asia is one of the poorest region of the world. You have more people in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh below the poverty line than in rest of the South Asian countries. So poverty and underdevelopment cannot be coped with by these countries. It requires individual country policy as well as a collective approach to deal uh, with this kind of you know uh, challenge and that is we have to move to human and societal security that's what is the challenge for South Asia today so uh, if you are talking of South Asia tomorrow to me South Asia of tomorrow should be South Asia of the common people of the poor people of those who vote and elect their leader rather than a region of the leadership which it is today and in this connection I think universities Pakistani universities Indian universities all universities of uh, South Asia need to focus on the problems and issues within South Asia not with the objective of proving who is right and who is wrong that should not be the objective Objective should be to understand the dynamics of problems and is it possible for you through your academic exercise, through your intellectual exercise to propose different options which can be available to different countries. So it's not that you prove who is wrong and right but what are different options, more than one option and then leave it to the policy makers to decide what they want to do. Therefore, to me, universities in South Asia need to, you know, uh, pay more attention to resolving problems in encouraging the cultivation of relationship at the societal and common uh, person level. For example, there is hardly, there is very little relationship amongst the academicians, amongst the media of different South Asian countries and if you want to promote regional cooperation, you have to uh, do that. Therefore, uh, the uh, research in the university should shift from security parameters to economic and societal cooperation. So I would conclude by you know, thanking the organizers, the Department of History, and Pakistan uh, studies for uh, inviting me to this uh, program and I very briefly summed up my reaction to the uh, debate that had taken place in the last two days. Thank you.